Welcome to Math with Professor V. No, you're not dreaming. Here's your second integral of the day. I'm actually recording this because my Calc 2 class has an exam tomorrow and they said they needed this one solved from their study guide. Now, before I start solving, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and let us jump right into things. Now, in order to evaluate this integral, we're gonna need to use a half angle identity. And there's a lot of confusion sometimes when you're going from trig and pre-calc to calculus regarding the half angle identities because we can rearrange them to suit our needs. So what am I talking about? When you're in trig and pre-calc, probably they taught you the half angles look something like this. They'll say cosine x over two equals plus or minus the square root of one plus cosine x over two. And then now we're over here in calc and I'm telling you, you're gonna use cosine squared x equals one half times one plus cosine two x. And I'm calling it the half angle still. And you might be thinking, what in the world is going on? Some texts might call it something else. It doesn't matter. It's the same identity, just rearranged. And let me show you how you can get from one to the other to suit your needs, okay? Basically, say you take this one that we're working with more frequently in calculus two when we need to integrate and I'm going to replace x with one half x, okay? So now what I'm going to have instead is cosine squared one half x, and that would equal one half times one plus cosine two times one half x is x. I just scaled everybody down, okay? Cut them in half, cut them in half. And now hopefully you can see we can get from here to the identity that we used to use back in the day by simply taking the square root of both sides, right? You just do a little square root here, square root here, plus or minus, bada bing, bada boom, call it a day. So hopefully this is inspiring you. Look up at that integral that we have going on. Oh, it has one plus cosine x underneath the radical. So what that means for me is I can move that two over and say two cosine squared x over two is equal to one plus cosine x. And that's fabulous. Why am I so excited right now? Well, I love math for one, but secondly, notice this is cosine squared. I'm super excited if I can put that underneath the radical instead, because then I can cancel out with this square root right here. Ugh. Things are just falling into place beautifully. So now we have integral from pi over three to pi over two of the square root of two cosine squared x over two dx. All right, now let's split things up because we have a constant underneath the radical as well, so let's handle with care. I'm gonna write this as square root of two times the square root of cosine squared x over two dx. Now we need to be very careful because when you take the square root of a variable quantity squared, technically, yes, we have the absolute value of cosine of x over two. Because anytime you take the square root of some quantity, this symbol represents the positive or principal square root, meaning if what was inside originally was negative, in the end, it will come out to be positive. Cosine of x over two, if it was negative and we square it, now it's not negative, but then afterwards when we take the square root, it will be positive. So we must always put these absolute value bars. So here's like the basic fact to keep in mind. When you have square root of x squared, it's not x, it's absolute value of x, okay? So how to proceed? How do we integrate with this absolute value? Well, this is where you go, hallelujah, they gave me a definite integral, pi over three to pi over two. Do you know what quadrant that's in? That's quadrant one. And cosine of x over two, so remember that's gonna be half the angle, so you're gonna be going from pi over six to pi over four. Yep, it's positive on the interval from pi over three to pi over two. So what does that mean for me? I can drop the absolute value bars and proceed worry-free, which is good, very good. 
If cosine had been negative on the interval, you would add an extra minus sign. I have a whole video on dealing with integrals that involve absolute value. I'll link it in the description. Um, so then we have square root of 2 cosine x over 2 dx. And hopefully you don't need to do a u sub. No. So we're going to have square root of 2. Just think to yourself, whose derivative did I take to get cosine something? It's sine something, the same something. And then remember, x over 2 is the same as 1 half times x. And instead of doing a whole u sub, all I'm going to do is divide by the coefficient on x. So dividing by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2, which I'm going to put out there. And then now this gets evaluated from pi over 3 to pi over 2. Very good. Leave the 2 rad 2 outside. And then you have sine of pi over 2 divided by 2. That would be pi over 4. Minus sine of pi over 3 divided by 2 is pi over 6. All right. So we've got 2 rad 2 times sine of pi over 4. Do you know what it is? It's rad 2 over 2. I'm going to write it as 1 over rad 2, what it was before we rationalized. It'll be easier to clean up. Minus sine of pi over 6 is a half. And then for the last step, just distribute. Distribute. See how this rad 2 canceled? Ugh, fabulous. So then this is 2 minus. And then over here on the next term, this 2 will cancel and the rad 2 stays. So 2 minus rad 2. And that's our final answer, okay? Now, if I were you, I would just practice rewriting the half angle identities both ways on my own because you don't want to memorize too many identities that are just the same version of themselves or just rearranged versions of themselves, not the same version. Um, memorize just the essentials and then know what you can derive in a reasonable amount of time so that if you're taking a test, you can just quickly kind of jot it down in the margin or something, okay? And the more you practice, then these identities will come to you quicker and your pattern recognition skills will get better. But a lot of the time students say, I wouldn't have thought of that on my own. I understand. That just means you need to do more problems. That's all it means. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, like I said, to subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. Tell me in the comments how spicy you thought this one was on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 to 10. How spicy. And 